Hello, I'm here to talk to you all about simulation theory. And what simulation theory is, is that the whole universe can be represented by uh, simple ones and zeros. And uh, there are many simulation theories out there, and this is my take on it. Uh, uh, my name's Frederick Stadler. And, um, yes. And uh, so, basically, um, the idea is that our planet was put into a data format, and uh, this Earth that we live on is really just a simulation of uh, part in, within the real world. We're just enacting a simulation. <coughs> and um, so one would imagine that a planet couldn't be put into data or energy and matter are too complex to be actually put into uh, quantized ones and zeros. Uh, but if one imagines all the universe was, was a, a rectangular prism of carbon atoms, a diamond, and that's all that existed, then wouldn't it be easy to just uh, map out the height, the width, and the depth of the diamond? And uh, then one could see, well, maybe with these numbers, you could represent the whole, uh, the whole universe, the, the diamond, uh, as ones and zeros, as a quantized state. So, um, so the idea as to how the, the real world was put onto a computer simulation is a bit complex. I'm going to go over it with you all. Um, so uh, first we're going to quickly talk about dimensions. So I have three representations here. This was one dimension. So we live in a, a four-dimensional world um, where we have uh, height, we have height, we have width, we have depth, and we have time as our uh, representation of four dimensions. Now, Albert Einstein was using these four-dimensional representation with one dimension being time in his uh, gravitational tensors, I believe. And um, anyways, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what they are briefly. So this, this represents one dimension, just a line. This would represent two dimensions. So here we have a plane. We have a plane. If this were totally flat, we can see our XY grid, as most of you mathematicians might be familiar with. Oh, right here. And we have our XY grid, as most of you mathematicians might be familiar with. And uh, the interesting thing about going to two dimensions is if we imagine all these three lines here are one unit long, uh, if, uh, if you had an observer where this eye is, this drawn eye, and you were trying to, um, you were looking at this one length here, if we broadcast this to only one dimension, we note that suddenly this is uh, this is a an infinite fraction. So this this one length becomes an unquantized unit when seen from a single dimension. But in fact, when we look at it in two dimensions, this is a quantized one. So we're going to go back to that concept in a little bit. Uh, I know it's a bit hard for some of you to follow, but um, and here we have a, a 3D object. So in three dimensions, we have the height, the width, and the depth, this little bit here. So we have three, three representations of uh, of matter in our uh, our world, three uh, height, width, and depth, and we have time. And uh, the idea behind getting a planet into uh, data format 
was to um, was to first go into the higher dimensions to figure out how it could be represented, and then you broadcast back. You uh, you uh, look at it like you do a quasi crystal, and uh, a quasi crystal would be a shadow of a crystal represented on the ground. So one can imagine that um, that we go back from higher dimensions. So, um, so the idea was that scientists were trying to find a representation for reality a long time ago in the, uh, the real world. And um, they got to uh, they got uh, a paradox, a bit of a, a problem with reality. And besides all the millions of other problems one would imagine with quantizing something as small as quarks and as complex as uh, energy and matter can be, uh, there's a very simple problem and that's the infinite number of angle possibilities when you rotate a rectangular prism, how do you represent those infinite number of angle possibilities as a quantized ones and zeros. So the whole thing sounds kind of crazy to a lot of you scientists, uh, representing uh, the whole planet as ones and zeros, representing any bit of matter and energy as ones and zeros. So, uh, so the idea was they, they tried to represent this angle uh, angle thing and uh, of, uh, of a rectangular prism of a diamond and they uh, they uh, they went up dimensions and they made it all the way to 34 dimensions so we went from four from from height width and depth and time to uh, to trying to represent the orientation of angles in 34 dimensions. And at last, one uh, brilliant scientist, we will uh, call him uh, Dick, uh, he, he was able to crack the, uh, the code of seeing, uh, seeing this whole impossible representation of uh, a diamond in 34 dimensions. And um, what a diamond is, why am I saying diamond? It's, it's just a, uh, it's a hexagonal arrangement of uh, carbon atoms. And it's just, uh, it's the smallest packing of carbon atoms that, um, that all fit in together. So instead of representing one of these, each of these atoms individually, when you're trying to represent matter, uh, there are a trillion, trillion carbon atoms in 12 grams of the diamond. You just, uh, you represent, you represent each one, you represent them all as a group and you just group the whole structure. So this, this whole grouping of, of uh, an infinite number of angles was finally seen as a quantized state in 34 dimensions. And then we started uh, broadcasting down the dimensions like you would imagine zipping a, uh, a file from a computer. So when you zip um, a file, you are representing the same amount of data in a smaller amount of space, a smaller amount of ones and zeros. Um, so uh, it had to be zipped from 34 to 33. And one by one, the dimensions had to be taken down until it was represented in uh, four dimensions, height, width, depth, and time. And this is an amazingly complex process. And um, basically, uh, once this was done, you uh, now had a quantized representation. And pretty soon, the whole, uh, 
the whole grand unified theory of everything turned the whole uh, energy and matter complex of the universe into a representable one and zero state uh, quantized uh, representation of information of data and uh, I know that's very hard for some of you to believe we look around us and we see all sorts of different colors and shapes and sizes and infinite angles and uh, we know from science that light is photons and we have multi billions trillions zillions i guess i can say zillions even though it's not a number of uh, photons everywhere and how do you how do you represent